Hello friends, my project is on fatigue analysis of universal joint. The objective of my this project is to find out the life which a part can serve without facing any form of faults and also find out its factor of safety. I am planning to use static structural module of ANSYS for doing my analysis. The material that I am planning to use is stainless steel. I am also planning to use Goodman's mean stress theory to find out fatigue life of the part. So, geometry of universal joint. Universal joint consists of many components. These components are center block, collar, forks, connecting pins, shafts and taper pins. Out of all this, taper pins and connecting pins are the weakest part of the uh, joint. These are made so to ensure that they feel first and then the part is not damaged further. So these are the properties of stainless steel which I currently have for my project. As you can see, I don't have the stress strain parameters which I need for fatigue analysis. Okay, setup of analysis file. For this uh, setting up of my problem, I went with the following methodology. I first fixed one shaft of joint and made sure that it had zero displacement and movement. On second shaft, I gave a bending moment of 500 Newton meters. Once this was done, I gave frictionless supports to shaft and connecting pins. After uh, the set initial setup of the problem was done, I went on with meshing of my problem. For meshing, I made sure that the mesh uh, size was fine and the elements that it used was all tries and quads. I did so to have a uniform mesh. So, as you can see, this is the total deformation of the joint that uh, and this is calculated at uh, the bending moment of 500 newton meters. As can be seen, the rotating shaft is the one which has maximum amount of deformation. Uh, this is one mass stress that the joint uh, uh, experiences at the bending moment of 500 newton meters. Uh, this uh, maximum stress is exerted near the collar of connecting pin. This is true with how the designing of a universal joint goes. Once a collar or a connecting pin fails, the part dislocates and the connection between two shafts is broken so as to make sure that they don't damage each other further. So this is elastic strain of joint. As you can see, it's also at the same place where the stress is maximum. So. Once this was done, I found out factor of safety for my part. Uh, it came out to be around 1.2, which is less. So there is room for changes in design up and thereby uh, one can increase the factor of safety. So for next step in my project, uh, I'm planning to find out the stress uh, cycle and stress stresses and the cycles corresponding to that stress stress to generate the curve. Once this is done and I have values for my stress strain, strain life parameters, I'll be able to fully define the material for fatigue analysis. Once this material is fully defined, one can easily perform fatigue analysis and find out the life which the part will uh, undergo. As uh, we all know, the fatigue loading, in, because of fatigue loading, the part undergoes uh, deformation and damage way before it even reaches its ultimate tensile strength. Results to expect from fatigue analysis. After the fatigue analysis is done, following results are expected to be seen. There will be a reduction in factor of safety because once a crack is generated, it starts moving from one grain boundary to another and thereby it propagates all throughout the component and damages the part. Reduction in life cycle of part. Once uh, the part has a form of deformation or uh, what do you say? Deformation in it, the life expectancy of the part re starts reducing. Reduction in maximum stress value that the component can work without incurring any damage. So, because of cyclic loading, the maximum stress that a part can handle usually comes down and thereby its uh, efficiency also decreases so i also uh, am see expecting the factor of safety to fall below the expected value 
if this happens the changes in design need to be done so that the part doesn't fail thank you